Hello everybody, Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I hope you guys have had a wonderful weekend. Um, here in Menasha, yesterday was absolutely gorgeous. We had such a beautiful day. Um, my stepdaughter Anna came over and invited her friends and their kids and all the kids and Haley came over and we just had a fantastic day by the pool. Finally, summer has arrived. Whew, I thought we were never gonna get summer. Hi Mary, hi Chris, hi Lori. I'm gonna get myself set up here so I can see comments. So just hang tight for just a second. Hi Jenny, hi Beth. Thank you for the share. I think we're safe to say that word now, so I just wanna let you know. And um, sharing is caring, so thank you for sharing my video. I really appreciate it. All right, here I am. I've got myself muted on my laptop. Hi, Marsha, Suzette, Amy, welcome. Okay, there we go. We are ready to roll. So, let's see. What do I have this week? Um, oh, here's a little note that needs to go back on here for the prize winners. Yeah. So, um... Yesterday we had a cookout and um, hot dogs and hamburgers and lots of chips. So I kind of had a naughty little weekend here with the food, you guys. I was down 34 pounds, but not anymore. <laughs> because um, Friday night I had a shoebox swap with my team and that was super fun. And everybody brings snacks or a dish to share. And then um, we had sub sandwiches and all kinds of goodies and desserts and and um, some really healthy stuff too. The chips, the chips kill me, you guys. The chips are like my downfall. And I don't usually eat chips at home, okay? Like I won't go in the kitchen and eat chips or whatever. But I make this amazing chip dip. And um, it's super, super simple. So here comes the recipe. Quarter cup of water, one beef bouillon, heat it up till it's dissolved, put it in a block of cream cheese, beat it with a beater. Boom. I usually make a double batch. Everybody loves it. So, Kelly has no control when it comes to the chips with the dip. And like I said, I won't like, it'll sit in my refrigerator and rot if I bring it home. But if I'm someplace, like out by the pool or at a party like I was Friday night, I can't stop. I just can't stop eating the crappy food. Can't stop. So I have no control with party food. I love it. <laughs> so I think I saw Bev um, pop on here. Hi, Janet. Hi, Debbie. Um, yeah, so I had a really naughty Friday night with the chips. And then yesterday, I didn't even eat a meal. Bev, no meal. I just, I ate so many chips that I felt really, like, I felt, ugh. I'm like, I'm not even going to eat today. So, we'll see what tomorrow brings. But I was down 34 pounds. It'll come back. I'm not worried. <laughs> yes, Kathy says, it looks like we had a great time. And it was a good way to kick off summer. It sure was. It's, um, it's been, it was a beautiful day. Today, it, like, rained. But now it's sunny and beautiful out. And I actually, I was working all day getting ready for tonight. And then um, I decided I needed a little nap. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Somebody has torrential rain and a tornado. Who just said that to me? Was it Mercy? I saw it scroll through on my phone. I only get to see like this much in messages on my phone. Bev says, Bev is my health coach. She goes, you need a health coach. <laughs> Do. You're fantastic, Bev. I just blew it. You know, you're going to have those weak moments, right? Um, Who was it that just said there's a tornado? Tornado warnings. I'm really sorry. I hope that nothing happens there. I grew up in Missouri. So funny little story. I'll make it quick. I grew up in Missouri and we had like tornadoes every week in the summer. And one day I'm sitting on the porch, I'm tying my shoes. I don't know how old I was. I was enough to stay home. I was old enough to stay home alone for a little while by myself or maybe all day. I don't even remember. But I'm tying my shoes and my mom comes screaming into the driveway, jumps out of her. At that time we had a little Bronco too. Jumps out of the Bronco too and comes running at me going, what are you doing? And I'm sitting there going, what? 
get in the basement. Here the tornado sirens were going off right at that moment. And I didn't even pay any attention to them because it happened so often. <laughs> oh yeah, Teresa says her son calls those cheat meals. Well, I wish Saturday, yesterday was actually a meal. It wasn't. It was just chips. I ate potato chips with dip. I ate chips with salsa. I ate pretzel sticks with cherry mustard dip from Door County. I ate all the junk. I didn't even have a brat or a hot dog, which I don't usually eat hot dogs. Only at ball games or, you know, school events. Then I'll eat a hot dog. I don't know what it is about those. They taste better. But anyways, I have some cards to share with you guys today. So I got this beautiful card from Wendy Poling, and it was really sweet. I love, love these stories. Oh, hi, Steve. You're in the garage. I came out there to say hi to you, but you were gone. And I'm like, where is he? Like, his bike is here? I don't know where he is. But anyways, you must have ran to the store. Um, I got this card from Wendy Poling. Check it out. This was a graduation card that she made for her eight, her eighth grade granddaughter's graduation. Yay, fancy schmancy. Look at that, Wendy, you did such a good job. And here's the best part, this is what I love, is I learned a lot in the making of it. I would not even have attempted it without your easy, straightforward tutorial directions. Thank you so much for sharing and breaking it out. You are so welcome. I know all these fancy things, I think sometimes people are really intimidated by them because they seem like they're gonna be super duper hard. But once you break it down into little steps or you see somebody do it, it's easy, right? Okay, that was from Wendy. Then, oh, this is a really cute card. I just got in the mail from Deb. Um, I can never say your name right. Anol, Anol, I don't know, A-N-I-O-L. Debbie, super cute, okay? It says, my dentist told me I need a crown. I was like, I know, right? <laughs> crown, yes. And she said, this is a store-bought card, but this is really cute. Look at that. She covered up the happy birthday with one of our stamps and punches. And this was really su sweet. She said she was at the hospital with her mother-in-law and checked out the gift shop. And this card screamed, send me to Kelly. So she did. How sweet is that? <laughs> I really laughed when I opened that. So thank you. Um, and then I have a card from Sandy Skenesny. And I probably say your name wrong too, Sandy. But she made a card using the card layout that I shared a couple, two or three weeks ago. Isn't that neat? I love black and white cards. And um, she was thanking me for the... Um, file of alternate ideas that I share with my Paper Pumpkin subscribers and also my team members. Um, Debbie, by the way, was a part of my team. She's a discount shopper. And so is Sandy, who made this card, is a discount shopper. And she said she loved the layout that I designed. Um, and I don't know how you do it. She goes, I don't know how you do it all and lose weight too. That made me giggle. Because <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. So thank you, Sandy. That is just the prettiest card. I love black and white cards. Then I just got this one. Well, I got it and it's been in my basket. Um, and this is from Morgan. Jen Morgan, I believe. Jen, your first name isn't on here. But um, let me look on the back. Designed by initials. Okay. It says, Kelly, I'm so glad I found you on YouTube. I'm excited to be part of your team. Yes, it is from Jen. She just joined my team as a discount shopper. Well, I assume a discount shopper. Maybe she's going to do more with it. And that is completely up to her. You guys, if you're looking to get a discount on your products, um, come to me. You can join as a discount shopper. I will never, ever push you to do more than you want to do, ever. Like, I'm not pushy. And um, Jen put one of these little embellishments, let me see if I can get it, little embellishments on her card. And she put this bubble wrap on the front of her card and slid it into the envelope. And I do recommend that you do something like that when you put embellishments on because you don't want it poking through the front of your card or your envelope, right? So thank you, Jen. And I am so happy to have you on my team. I just loaded Jen up last night in all my databases. So woohoo! Then I have a card from Sharon Jones. 
Yay, Sharon! This is the Let It Ride stamp set in that beautiful wood grain paper. And um, yeah, Sharon is showing me a card she made. I sent her some of this paper that I had left over because she tried to order it and there wasn't any more left. And I thought, well, I've got some miscellaneous pieces. So I sent it on to her with, a, um, I think she won a prize. Maybe this stamp set. Sharon, you know I have a terrible, terrible memory, right? So yeah. Okay, I'm going to set these back here. All right, on to, um, let's see, what else? Okay, so we had grandkids here this weekend. Um, Molly and Porter both stayed overnight. And it was funny because my husband came upstairs and woke me up this morning. And he was just so nice and quiet about it. He's like, hey, the kids would really like pancakes for breakfast. And Anna's husband, Scott, was stopping to get me buttermilk because I, I told Steve last night, I need buttermilk and get some sausage or bacon or something. And he was supposed to go to the store this morning, but his knee hurts so bad, you guys, he can't even walk. Like, it's bad. So he's probably going to be going to the doctor this week. But anyway, so he's like, hey, the kids would like pancakes for breakfast. And I'm like, okay, I'll get up. <laughs> And I made everybody buttermilk pancakes. Haley came over, Anna, Scott, Andy, Molly, Porter, Steve, me. We all had um, sausage and buttermilk pancakes. So it's one of my specialties. I'm the breakfast lady. <laughs> so that was real. Oh, uh, Bev, I did not eat the pancakes nor the sausage because I'm trying to redeem myself from yesterday and Friday. I had protein cereal. Mmm. <laughs> It's not bad, but it's not pancakes with maple syrup and sausages. <laughs> oh, Diane had knee surgery two days ago. Oh, I'm so sorry, Diane. Steve has had multiple knee surgeries. He had a partial replacement a few years ago. I wish you well with that because we know. Oh, and Haley blew her ACL. And we should have like a family plan at the knee surgery place. That's what we should have. It's... I've never, knock on wood, had any problems with my knees, but I don't want to jinx myself. Okay, this week, you guys, I have, uh, Wednesday will be my tip video, and I have so many things that I want to show you. I'm not even sure where to start, like um, that sprinkle pigment powder things. I have these on my desk, and I'm like, I can't wait to play with them. Um, I would really like to show you some of these new suites of products and show you what the framelits do. Like maybe take the Good Morning Magnolia and go through the whole thing and show you what all the pieces and parts do. I don't know. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'm not sure yet. Um, that's going to be on Wednesday. Tuesdays, Haley's coming over and we're going to work on some wedding plans. So that'll be fun. And then... Um, on Thursday, I have a blog hop with the one stamp at a time blog hoppers. And that's my blog hop where I have to make a card or some type of a project. It can be a scrapbook page. And then you have to make a 3D item to go with it. So I love that one because I love making little 3D items. That's on Thursday. Friday, I'll have some type of a tip video. Uh, Megan just said, is it really warm where you are? We're swimming. Um, it's nice enough to swim. So, yeah, we had our, oh, <laughs> and then Steve, you'll never believe, we find dead things in our pool once in a while. It just happens. Um, today he found a dead rabbit. Ah, like a rabbit. Like, what were you thinking? So, we don't think rabbits are dumb enough to jump in our pool or fall in by accident. So, we think a hawk probably grabbed it and was flying over and dropped it by accident. But, yeah, gross, right? Ugh. We're going to hit that thing with some major chlorine before I get back in there. <laughs> okay, so that's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All of the cards I'm going to share with you tonight will be posted probably tonight as soon as I can get this video uploaded once I'm done. So don't worry about that. Um, it'll be posted on my blog tonight or tomorrow morning. And I always put all the dimensions in there. But when I get done with this video, I have the dimensions typed up already. I'll go to Facebook above the video once it's posted and we're not live anymore and I'll put all the dimensions in for you in case you want to recreate because I have a layout challenge for you guys. You guys love these or you know you tell me you do. So I'm going with that. And um, so I have a layout challenge and I think you're going to like it. Then let's see. Um, da, da, da. Oh, I need to plug my phone in. Hang on. 
I almost forgot. Let's get that plugged in there. Yay, okay. And then we are going to do prize prizes right now. So we have some candle embellishments. Now you guys, I have a box of stuff to um, give out as prizes and I've still got some stuff left from the old catalog. So that's what we're gonna go through first. And this is the candle embellishments. They're super cute little candles that are all on adhesive stickers. They're silver and gold. And our winner for making a comment last week Sunday on Facebook Live is Charlene Schulmeister from Antioch, Illinois. Congratulations, congratulations, that's hard to say. Charlene, you won and I will be mailing this out tomorrow. And then for sharing my video, I have a take your pick tool. This is going out to Peggy Cation of Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Thank you for sharing, Peggy. And last but not least, there's another category for people who place orders. And Let It Ride is going to Diana Clover of Braidwood, Illinois. So we had two winners from Illinois. Woohoo! All right, congratulations, Diana, Charlene, and Peggy on the prizes. I'm going to set these back here so I don't lose them in the mess that I'm about to make. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't think I have any other news to tell you guys about. Um, I think we're going to get going here. What should I make first? I'm thinking I'm going to do the card challenge first. So... Let me get my little bin unpacked here so I know what I'm doing. We are using, for my card that I made, I'm using the um, Good Morning Magnolia stamp set suite of products. I think um, you guys have, you know, if you're online, you probably have seen this quite a bit. It's one of the pre-order items that, whoa, that we demonstrators can order ahead of time. So... Um, a lot of demonstrators have been showing it for a while, and this is actually the first time, I think. I think it's the first time I'm showing it. I don't tend to show things too far in advance of them being available to you because I think it's mean. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it is kind of mean because you can't get it, right? And so if I show you all this stuff a month ago, you can't get it until June 4th. So I'm nice like that. You're welcome. <laughs> all right, here we go. Good Morning Magnolia is such a big stamp set. You get it in two cases, okay? And they're the small cases. And then we have these amazing framelits called Magnolia Memory Dies. And what else? What else went with this suite? Oh, I've got it in my catalog here so that I would make sure I wouldn't forget to tell you guys the stuff. Um, we also have the Mem... Magnolia Lane Large Specialty Memories and More Cards and Envelopes, okay? So look at these cards. These are darker than, and they have silver foil um, embossing on them. My goodness, I couldn't think of the word. Um, I missed what you just asked. Somebody just asked if somebody ordered something. Hang on, I'm going to look here for a second. It's a little delay going on here tonight. Da, da, da. I don't know. I missed I missed your comment. So if you want to do it again, I can try and answer. But anyways, we have these nice envelopes. This is darker than crumb cake too. So that's kind of cool because um, it's a different color. So we have the cards. These are all scored. You just fold them on the score line and you're ready to make a card with an envelope. And then the really cool thing is, hang on. We have envelope liners that you take and put right inside the envelopes. Hang on. To make them fancy. Who doesn't love fancy, right? Yeah. So that's a whole pack of cards and envelopes. And I like this. I can see myself like stamping on this paper and using it for layers, even though it's card based. Just saying. Kind of a good idea, right? Then there's a Memories and More card pack, and I've already showed you guys that. I think, well, oh, let me grab it. Let me grab it. Um, Magnolia Lane Memories and More card pack. Yeah, these are really, really pretty. Okay, I'm just going to flip through it because I've already shown this to you guys. Ready? 
beautiful double-sided. Oh, let's see if I can do this so it matters. <laughs> like you can see anything. Yeah, you get four by six, three by four packs of cards, two of these in a package. This, um, These are really cool. And I am going to be doing something with these for a Facebook Live. Maybe when I have to be gone, I'll do up a Facebook Live, not live, for you guys. So, um, we can do something fun with those. Okay. Uh, oh, we also have, let's see. Um, oh, here they are. The little cork embellishments. These are really neat, too. Those come with it. We've got some ribbon here. We've got some mossy meadow uh, linen thread and then some really pretty ribbon to go with it. Also, one thing I didn't even notice is Stampin' Blends combo pack. So saffron, new color. Those are our alcohol markers, so that's cool. And then last but not least, yes, today Kelly spent some time making up a few of these so I can show you. These are all the coordinating colors that go with the Magnolia Lane Designer Series paper, which is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, you guys, I'm going to flip my camera around now so we can start stamping. And um, I will show you what I came up with, and I'll show you the card challenge because I think you're going to love it. Okay, hang on. I'm getting really warm. Um, let me turn on my ceiling fan. Okay, Whew. sorry. Sorry, that was a little up close and personal with my girls, right? <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. Okay, we're going to flip this camera around. So close your eyes if you get motion sickness, and I will um, tell you when to open them. Oh, that ceiling fan feels amazing. Hang on, I just messed this up. Don't open your eyes yet. I'm really wiggling things around here. Okay, I'm going to undo my mirroring. There we go. Okay, you can open your eyes now. I think I'm done messing with you. All right. Let's see. I am going to get my cards out here and get everything off my laptop so that I can scroll down and see what's, what's happening. It's not a problem. My girls are always in the way. I know. They're just annoying, aren't they? Let me turn this fan down so I don't blow away here. I bought a new ceiling fan. If my husband is still in the garage watching, Steve, I bought a new ceiling fan like quite a while ago. And when your knee feels better, I would like it installed. Just saying. <laughs> that was really sassy, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't usually say that. He's pretty good about doing stuff, but I think he forgot about it. But I do have a new ceiling fan because my ceiling fans are really ugly and one of the bulb things doesn't even work. Like you can put a bulb in it, but it doesn't work. Okay, here we go. First card. I have Petal Pink, one of my very favorite colors. I just really gravitate towards this color. It's soft, it's elegant, it's pretty. I love it. So we've got eight and a half by five and a half, and I'm just gonna fold that in half, and then I'm bringing in my favorite positioning tool, which is our Stamparatus. And we are going to go with Early Espresso ink here. Now, if you, if you're, if you haven't watched me before, maybe you missed this, if you take your stamp case and put it under your plate, it keeps it even so it doesn't go down in a slant, and it's easier for you to ink up. Early Espresso ink. Make sure I have my card going the right way. And I'm just going to take this and look and see. Yep, that looks perfect. I'm just putting it in here. I'm going to hold it down with my magnets. Oops, that does not want to stay up there. Hang on a second, you guys. My notes are... I've got so much junk behind the scenes that you can't see that's causing me some problems I need to clean up. Okay, here we go. Keep the magnets out of the way of the stamp. Now what I found is our Whisper White cardstock has a special coating on it, as does the Very Vanilla, and it's a very nice surface to stamp on. So 
If you're a stamper and you don't have Whisper White or very vanilla cardstock, you get yourself some. I'm not kidding. You will not be disappointed. This cardstock, all other colors are rather porous. And what you find is your ink kind of doesn't stay on the surface bold and bright. So using the Stamparatus is a way that I can make this. Can you see how not dark it is? I hope you can see that. See how it's not like real um, bold of an image? So you can stamp it over and over and over again until you get it as dark as you want it because that paper is porous. And don't get me wrong, our cardstock is very high quality. Look at how pretty that is. Isn't it gorgeous? So this is what I decided to do. Whoops, I'm gonna have to clean this because we're using this with various colors too. Let me get this all cleaned off. Here we go. This is our Stampin' Chamois for those of the, you that are new. I put it in a clear stamp case. You can order those in a four pack. And by the way, if you're new to me, this is my blog. You will find an online ordering button in the right hand column. Use this monthly host code and um, that will get you special perks with me if your order is under $150. If it's over $150, don't use it. You'll get your own rewards from Stampin' Up. You'll still get special perks from me. Because, yeah, I don't like orders over $150. No, <laughs> wouldn't that be dumb? Yeah, that's not funny. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of crumb cake. I've still got that early espresso ink here. And I'm going to use this beautiful thinking of you in the espresso. And then I'm also, I've got three cards I'm going to make here. So I'm going to bring in some petal pink. This is for a different card, not this one. So don't worry, but we're going to stamp it at the same time. And then we're going to clean this off because we need to use it again. I'm going to bring it in and we're going to do, oh, I can probably use this end right here. I'm going to use some memento black ink and that's for another card. Let me get this open here. There we go. Okay, let's put these out of the way here. All right. This is for another card. This is for the card that we're doing right here. This is a brand new punch. It's called Timeless Label Punch. I'm not going to lie to you. I had to look at it because I can't remember jack anything. Like, I'm so bad. And with this one, I'm going to punch it right in the middle of my greeting. I'm going to punch this one out too. I'm going to punch this one kind of over to the side. And I'm just going to set that aside for another card that I will show you. So don't worry. I'm not hiding cards from you. I will show them to you. And we're going to put some dimensionals on the back up here. Gosh, my back is giving me some problems. Um, I don't know. Since this morning, I woke up and it's like there's a catch in it. And it's really annoying me. Okay. This is our gorgeous... Magnolia Lane Designer Series paper, right? So I just picked out three different kinds or different um, patterns. I've got a two inch piece by five and a half, and then I mounted it on Mossy Meadow, two and a quarter by five and a half, and then this is our braided trim. And I like to make those ends fray. So I take um, a pokey tool or your take your pick tool and fray out the ends on the braided trim. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I like it a lot. Where did my other, I don't know where my take your, oh, there it is, my take your pick tools right here, hello. Okay, then we're gonna get out our liquid glue. And we're gonna just put this right over here. So I've left a little margin of petal pink here. And, oops, hang on, I just dropped something. Again, my screen is not scrolling, you guys. The other day it scrolled fine, but for some reason it's not scrolling here um, with your comments, so I have to go over and do it manually. All right, and then, this is probably like the simplest card, right? We're gonna put this greeting on there. Now we have a thank you that you could use. But I just chose to use this one. I'm going to put my greeting right here. And then 
I've got a three quarters by five or four and a quarter inch piece of the designer series paper. I'm gonna whoops add some liquid glue to that because you know what I'm doing with this, right? I want it to go on the inside of my card. Oh yeah. And we're gonna put this right in here. So that when they open it up, it's pretty on the inside too. Okay? So there's card number one. We're gonna do another one. Here comes card number two. We've got Whisper White Thick cardstock. Thanks you guys. Thanks for the love. It's a really easy layout and um, what I'm doing with this, I'm going to show you two more cards. I'm really featuring the designer series paper, but the layout is cool. I like how this flower is stamped kind of as, you know, kind of a background element. You can put whatever greeting you want on it, but we're using that designer series paper that I know we're all really good at hoarding, right? Now I'm going to bring in black instead of early espresso because the designer paper I'm using is black. So we're going to do... I'm going to stand up here so I can make sure I don't get this too crooked. There we go. I'm bringing this swirly image into the inside of my card. Just like that. Get that cleaned off. And then we're going to bring the Stamparatus back in. And I'm going to do the same thing to the front of this card. So I want to make sure I have it in the right place here. Yep, that looks good. Put this in. Drop this in place. And now we're going to use Memento Black Ink. Yeah, I don't know. We haven't heard anything about a designer series paper special coming yet, Marsha but I will make sure I let you know when it does so you can get your order in. And again, this is a very porous paper. This is not our Whisper White, it is Whisper White Thick. And so having the Stamparatus and being able to stamp it several times until I get that good crisp ink. I want this to be black, 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 and now I have it. Isn't that neat? I love it. Okay, whoops, you know what? I need to clean this because we've got one more to do. I love sitting down and just making multiples of a design or multiples using a technique because you get your energy flowing and your ideas flowing and they're all in the same wavelength for a little while anyways until you go squirrel and you're off on something else, right? <laughs> kind of crazy. Okay, then I'm going to bring in um, some mossy meadow and this really pretty leaf that's part of the Good Morning Magnolia. And where's our, here's our framelits. Here's a framelit for that leaf. Okay, so we're gonna run that through our big shot and it's gonna come right out like this with the dimensional on the back like magic. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I already have it cut out so you don't have to wait for me to do that. Um, and where, here's my, here's my label that we just cut a little bit ago. I'm going to take this leaf and I just wanted to use it as an embellishment, just like that. Okay. And more dimensionals. I had a lot of fun with this, um, Good Morning Magnolia. I do have an online class that's going to be coming out using it. So watch for those details. Oops, I put dimensionals on the back of that. Where did my card base go? Did you, here it is. And then I have already put my two by five and a half inch black layer. Isn't this just beautiful? I love how stark it is. Two inches wide on a piece of two and a quarter inch by five and a half petal pink. And then I use that beautiful um, mossy meadow linen thread. Love it. And we're going to attach this right over here, same way we did our last card. Isn't that just stark over here with that magnolia stamped in black? 
and then I'm gonna put my greeting up here so it kind of fills in some of the white space over here. What do you guys think? Pretty! Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna scroll my computer again. Yep, I think there's probably um, questions there, but I'm sorry. Sometimes things work right, sometimes they don't, and this is one of those don't times. Okay, next, we have one more to do, and let me move this out of the way. We're gonna use early espresso for this one, and I've got this, it's four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. And once again, here comes our Stamparatus. Let me close this up. I don't think I need that anymore. I'm going to be using Versamark ink. Whoops, I see, hang on a second, I'm gonna. I don't want my Versamark ink pad to get all icky and I see a little bit of um, ink in there. There we go. Okay, let me put this someplace where it doesn't ruin my paper. Do you guys do that? Set a baby wipe down on your um, desk and then it gets on your cardstock and then it wrecks it. Yeah, more times than I care to mention. Oh, Trudy's granddaughter is watching tonight. Yay! Okay, here we go. We are going to take our early espresso don't forget to use your embossing buddy. I just find that things work so much nicer when we use this to avoid that powder spray. And I need to make sure this is moved over far enough. Yep, that looks good. I'm gonna pin it down with my magnets. Um, I only really need to stamp this once, not multiple times like with the ink, so. Not such a big deal holding it in place because it doesn't matter. We're only going to do it one time. And then I've got my white embossing powder here. And you know what? Just that watermark on there I think is attractive. So maybe I'll make another card and I won't emboss it. I'll just use the Versamark to do a water mark. Look at how pretty that is, right? Let me get this closed up because we know the disasters that can happen when you are lazy and don't close your embossing powder. Here we go. And I am going to have to heat this in real life. <laughs> Usually I have another layer that's all heated so you don't have to listen to this heat tool. Blah. But I don't tonight. Yeah, um, Kathy says she received my Facebook notification that I will be live in 15 minutes. Well, that came out at 6.45, and I was live at 7 o'clock, so, yeah. Set your alarm on your phone. Kelly goes live at 7 p.m. Central Time every Sunday night. That's what I do when I don't want to miss some live shows. <laughs> I put an alarm uh, or an alert in my calendar. Thank you. Somebody just said they love my nails. Thank you. Yeah, my lady decided to, she goes, let me just do your nails. Don't tell me what you want. I will just do the design. And so she painted the sparkles on the edge. My fingers are really dirty, but um, it's just ink. Painted the sparkles all over the edge. And then this really cool design, right? I like them too. Thank you. I'm still stuck on Berry Burst. I love that color. <laughs> okay, so here is what I did with this one. And now I am going to bring in the petal pink image that we stamped and punch it out with the timeless label punch, which yes, I did just have to look at the name of it again because <laughs> I can't remember anything. And then let's see, where did this go? Doo -doo -doo. Um, hang on. Oh, here it is. I've got, again, two by five and a half. This is just a different pattern of the Magnolia paper. We're gonna glue that in place. Again, I'm just leaving a little tiny margin of the card sticking out over here. We're gonna 
take some mossy meadow and punch out another one of these timeless label punches. <laughs> yep, had to look at it again. I just got so many things in my head that I can't be bothered to remember all these things that I can read, right? Is that how you feel sometimes? Like if you can read it, you don't need to have it stuck in your head. So I just cut that in half and I'm using it to make a border on each end of my sentiment layer. Just like that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Dimensionals. Put a dimensional here. And Marlene says this set is on her list. It should be because you're going to love it. And I have an online class coming out. So it'll be even better. Now I took a little bit of our flax white ribbon and I'm going to take that and fold it like this. Um, actually, I want to fold it the other way. Oh, no, this way. <laughs> Sorry, I'll make up my mind. I'm a girl, so I can change my mind as many times as I want. That's what I've been told my entire life. <laughs> And we're just going to put this on the back of our layer. So it's sticking there with that tape. Now what I want to do is I want to go like this and like that. Just have a little bit sticking out there. And this one I'm just going to pop right up here. Looks like my greeting's kind of crooked. I'll fix that later. Then I have a white layer, and this is for the inside. Whoops. And again, I just want to do a little something with that inside. So I'm going to bring in the Early Espresso ink, and I'm going to stamp this little whirly giggy deal and this little whirly giggy deal. Just like that. And our card is complete. Look at that. All right, you guys, we have three cards. They're all the same. All I did was change some of the ribbon, change the placement of my greeting or my sentiment, change the designer series paper, and change the colors of cardstock and ink. And they all are the same but look different, don't they? What do you guys think? Okay, now here is my card challenge. So for those of you that may be new and don't know what I'm talking about, this is a layout challenge. This will be featured, it'll be on my blog, and you'll find the link for it after this video is over. I post the link to my Facebook, There's and it's going to say a stamp above, blah, 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 and a bunch of Chinese. But you just click on that link and go to my blog. You'll be able to find this layout challenge there the whole time. Um, and I want you to make cards using this layout. Now, this is a loose challenge. You can switch it this way. You can do it this way. You can do it this way, however you would like. But I want this piece. The only requirement is that, you know, it kind of looks like this. <laughs> and this is designer series paper. I want you to cut your designer series paper. I don't want you to stamp images like I did, but use designer series paper right here. I will award a prize for everybody that submits cards to me. No, no, no. I said that totally wrong. Hold on. I will do a drawing with everybody in it that submits cards to me for a prize if you join my card layout challenge. So just make a card, make two cards, make five cards, cut up a whole pack of designer series paper and make cards so you have them on hand when you need them using this challenge and I will have a drawing for a winner. I'm not gonna award prizes to everybody that does it. <laughs> I wish I could do that, but that's not realistic. So I will show you this again at the end of the video, but how fun, right? Magnolia, good morning, Magnolia is so beautiful. K 
Can it be retired designer paper? Yes, it can be retired. I want you to use your paper. New paper, retired paper, whatever paper. That paper that you have been holding on to to find that perfect project for, that's really the paper that I want you to grab and use because you know what? I do the same thing. I keep waiting and waiting for the perfect project to use that with because I just know if I cut the paper, I'm gonna find something that I wanted to do with it and now I'm not gonna have enough paper. Do you guys do that? That's what I do all the time and it's maddening. Then I never use the paper. I want you to get out the paper that you had to have but were hoarding and cut it and use it. That is my goal. <laughs> That's my goal for you. Okay, hang on, I'm getting out my next card now. And I think we're gonna go with this one next. So we're gonna put the Magnolia Designer Series paper away and I'll let you look at this beautifulness for a little bit. And yes, we are coming in with the Sailing Home. This is a beautiful, beautiful bundle in the new catalog. And I love this Baker's Twine. It is Night of Navy and Sahara Sand, and it's just mm, delicious. Okay, here we go. Now, I, you guys heard me say, or maybe you didn't get on soon enough, but I had a shoebox swap for my team on Friday night. And, um, hang on, I gotta put this away so I don't lose it. And one of my team members' friends made a card using this, and I thought, oh, I love that layout. So um, I changed it up a little bit because I needed a different kind of card than the card that she had. Her card was fabulous, and I loved it, and this is where I got my inspiration from. So the sale, come sale away is the designer series paper and you can see how beautiful it is and then these are the coordinating cardstock colors balmy blue blue black mossy meadow night of navy soft suede and whisper white so let me set that aside and again if you're online you've probably seen a whole bunch of different um cards made with this it's beautiful it's just a beautiful sweet I took my stamp set and my framelits, and I, you guys know that I like to do this. I like to make up kind of a template. These are all the framelits with the stamped images in them if they have a stamped image. And then I stamped all the images here because even though they're on the front of the stamp set, I like to see them with my own ink. <laughs> kind of like with your own eyes, right? Yeah. So here's all the framelits. And that way I can just look at this and go, oh yeah, look at, there's that little bow that I was looking for or that little um, framelit that does the small greeting. So this is why I like to do this. I like to see them and what they make. Okay, Night of Navy, four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. We're just gonna burnish that edge. Now here's the cool thing. Kathy, who designed the layout for this card, she's the one who told me this. We've got just a regular card base. It's 11 inches long. We're going to cut off three and a quarter inches right off of our card base. And now this piece that was here is gonna go as a layer here. I know, right? How cool is that? Okay, here we go. I have a piece of de the designer series paper and this is not on my sheet that I cheat with two inches by four. Forgot to put it on my little cheat sheet. We're gonna take that and put it right here on this little panel that sticks out. Isn't that pretty? I probably wouldn't have put the Knight of Navy on a Knight of Navy card base, but Kathy did and I thought it was just really striking. I love it. Now, we've also got an inside layer here. Where did my piercing mat go? Right here. And I'm gonna bring in my Knight of Navy ink and I'm going to stamp the smaller sailboat. This is four by five and a quarter. Stamping that smaller sailboat and then bringing in my aqua painter. 
and your ink is going to bleed a little bit when you hit it with water because it's not waterproof ink and that's what I'm doing here. I'm just bleeding the ink a little bit. I have not squeezed the end of my aqua painter. It's just barely got any water on it and I just kind of colored that in a little bit. We're going to add this to the inside of our card and I would consider this card to be a fun fold. You guys know I love fun folds, right? Okay, I'm just scrolling up again because my computer chooses not to do what I want it to do. Next, I'm going to take this little tiny thanks and I'm going to stamp that. And then the framelit for that is right here. So I'm gonna die cut that. And then I'm gonna take, this is the helm. I remember I asked for the official term and people said they do call it a wheel, but it is also called a helm. Look at how dirty I am. Where did that ink come from? I don't even know. I don't even think I used that ink. Anyways, I, I'll take a bath later. No, I'm just kidding. I already showered, so I would look decent for you guys. Um, copper foil sheet. I'm going to cut this out and this out in my big shot. Looky there, I already did it. <laughs> I know I'm amazing, right? Yeah, just kidding. Okay, here's our thanks, and I've got mini dimensionals on the back of that. So the last thing that we need to do for this card is we need to um, do some stamping on the front here. This is a little different, and um, the reason why I did it is because I wanted my lighthouse to have a little color without coloring it. And I didn't want my lighthouse to be just blue. So I'm stamping it with Sahara Sand, which matches our Baker's Twine and colors in the Designer Series paper. I'm going to stamp this so that it's just off the paper down here a little bit, okay? And then we're going to clean it. And we're going to stamp it in Night of Navy. Don't overdo this, okay? Don't read, don't overthink this. Just stamp it again. Oh, that looks like crap. Maybe you need to overthink it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I kind of rubbed it and it, it smeared. So, what I was trying to say, oh, did you see how I just stamped right in that blue without cleaning? Yeah, way to go, Kelly. You want it to be offset a little bit, but you don't have to get crazy about it being perfect. And it is going to look just a tiny bit blurry, but I like the color in there without coloring it. So hang tight and you're like, oh my lord, what is she doing? It's gonna, it's gonna all come together. Here comes the bigger of the two sailboats and I'm just gonna put this boat right down here. And again, I'm gonna bring in my aqua painter and color my boat and my sails just a little bit. Make them stand out a little bit. Just like that and oh I need birds I love the seagulls that come with the set too so I'm gonna stamp some right here and clean that off a little bit some right here there we go this is going on that blue piece that we cut off the front And then we're going to take some of this baker's twine. And here's what I did. I like took a piece that was long enough to double it up and then tape it to the back. Okay. So about this long. I'll measure that for you. Hang on. Cuz I know I like it's easier if gosh, Kelly, why don't you just tell us how long it is, right? It's 11 inches long. Okay, so I'm gonna double this over, and now I'm gonna take the end here, doesn't matter which end, it could be the loose end or the, or the bound end, and I'm gonna tie a knot in it. Just like that, okay? So my idea here was that I wanted some type of a knot because when you have C um, images, there's knots involved. <laughs> I don't know what all that's called, but I just know. Right, when you tie the boat off, there's all kinds of fancy knots. When you do this, that, and the other thing, there's knots. The anchor has all kinds of fancy knots on it. You know, it's funny too, because my husband, 
um, he was a seam fitter and he taught um, rigging, which is a class all about how to tie things to, you know, for so cranes can lift them and stuff like that. He taught um, a rigging class, so he knows all about the knots and those kind of things. There we go. Okay, isn't that kind of different? Yeah. And then, hang tight, we've got dimensionals. I'm going to go crazy with some dimensionals here. I'm going to put some right on the edge here. And then I'm going to put some right on the edge here. Get these ready to rock. Sailor's Knot, Linda, thank you. Not able to hear you that well. Lana, that's on your end. You need to turn your volume up. And that is a um, common thing that people don't realize. There's a volume button that you can turn up either on your computer, on your iPad, on your on the video itself. But the volume, I've got a very loud voice and a big mouth. If you ask anybody in my family, <laughs> they will tell you. So the volume issue is on your end. You need to turn your device up. Okay, here comes our copper helm. Isn't that cool, you guys? Look at that. Now, you could leave it just like that if you wanted to. That's pretty neat looking. But I wanted to put this little thanks right here over top. And look at that. We have a really neat fun fold. Thank you, Kathy Beck, for this idea. I love this whole bundle of product. It's just amazing. Okay. I'm going to leave this here for a minute while I get my mess cleaned up and we can move on to the next thing. Does, um, is anybody, does anybody know, like, did she say what type of device she's on that her volume is low? Maybe somebody can tell her how to turn that up if we know what kind of device she's on because I know that's frustrating. Believe me, I am not quiet, so, uh, <laughs> got a big mouth, like I said. <laughs> I'm not shy about it either. You know, my husband's always saying, shh. I'm like, no, I'm just loud. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I need that blue again. I've got another card for you using another new stamp set. I have had so much fun, you guys. I can't even tell you. Getting ready for today was a blast. All right. Here we go. We still need that. Um, I'm going to leave that right there. This is going to go in here, put my directions away, and here comes the next card. I'll let you guys look at that for a second. Wowza. Oops, I can get rid of this. And we're going to need this and this, and I think that's it. Okay. Here it comes. Oops. Can't leave that on the floor. All right, you guys, I've got two stamp sets here. So I thought, you know, Father's Day is right around the corner, and I probably should have done this a little earlier, but I didn't, and I'm sorry. Um, but you know what? There's always next year, and this is a fantastic set, a good man. It's good for birthdays. It's good for thank yous. It's good for retirement. Um, there's some really great greetings in here. And then these images of men, you know, two of them being fathers, this one relaxing. Really cool line art, kind of sketchy images. Well, I decided to pair that up with a wish for everything. Look at this beast. 38 different sentiments in this double pack. And there's just about everything in here. Um, and then you can get this as a bundle with the word wishes dies. So if you buy these two together, it's 10% discount. Here's, this is what I spent a lot of time today doing is getting all of these things die cut so you could actually see them. So we have happy day. So we've got happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, happy New Year's. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Halloween. Happy Easter. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Mother's Day, Happy Father's Day, Merry Christmas. All of these different dies come in this pack. And then what's really cool is if you get this um, word set, the sentiment set, instead of doing Happy Father's Day all in the dies, there's a happy in here. 
someplace. I know it's here somewhere. Um, and then you can use fathers in a die cut and then day again stamped. So you can, oh, there's the happy. <laughs> you can mix and match these with the words. This is like such a wonderful thing to have in my library of stamps and matching dies that go together. So I'm really glad that I ordered this. Here's the real heroes of the world, our fathers like you. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. First my mother, forever my friend. Anyways, this is a bundle, okay? This is called Word Wishes and a Wish for Everything. You can buy them separately, but um, I do recommend them together. And now, let me show you what I made. First of all, I am going to get out my little dimensions here so I know what to tell you guys. I decided to bring in, again, the... Oh, this is the Magnolia paper. Here we go. The um, Come Sail Away paper, and I use this design right here. And, hang on, I got some all over again, and I'm not scrolling, so... <laughs> yeah, Beth, that's funny. Beth says, yes, her volume level goes up and down depending on one proximity to her phone and if she laughs, etc. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I do. When I stand up to do something, I'm really, really close to my phone. So that's why that happens. Okay, I just got a scrap of the designer series paper and I am using the biggest rectangle stitched framelit out of this pack. So this is actually, you've seen me number them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is number one. And I am going to die cut this out of this um, paper with the sailboats on it. Now, I know I've shown you this tip before, but just in case we have some new people here, I'm gonna show it to you again. When you run this through your die cutting machine, I have found that these rectangles, if I run them through like this, I have a problem with them not cutting as well on the top or the bottom, I can't remember which. If I run them through at an angle like this, make sure they're not sticking out beyond your cutting plates, they cut perfectly every time. So just a little tip there for you. Yeah, Rhonda, I know, the word sets are really cool, right? Like, I love stuff like that, so that was one of the first things on my order. Okay, and here we go. I love the stitched edge that's left on your pieces when you die cut it. I think it's just so classy. And let me get this put out of my way so I don't lose it. Next, what we're going to do is... We're going to emboss again. Shocking, right? I usually never emboss more than once on a Facebook Live. But we're going to do it again, and we're going to do it in real life. Not where I cheat. <laughs> a little bit. Here we go. I used my embossing buddy on the Designer Series paper. We are going to emboss right on Designer Series paper. And this is something that I just don't think of to do very often, but it's a really cool way to, do, um, to make a, a new technique on designer series paper. I'm going to stamp my guy in a chair with Versamark ink and then we're going to pour some white embossing powder on it. And today when I was playing around with this, okay, it's like, wow Kelly, you really can't see that guy very much. Don't worry. That's what I thought too. But then we've got another thing we're going to do. So let me grab my heat tool. What are you guys drinking tonight? I have my strawberry lemonade. Yeah, I am actually very close to my phone, Debbie. I am right by my phone, so... Is everybody else having problems, too? Maybe I'm just not as loud as I usually am. I'm a little more subdued tonight. Not for any reason. <laughs> I'm happy things are good. Maybe I'm just a little quieter. I'm sorry. Diet Pepsi, water, milk. Oh, Mary, I love milk. Sweet tea. Sharon, I love sweet tea. Iced tea with lemon. Two bottles of water. Propel. Oh, okay. Marie says she's not having any problem hearing me tonight, so that's good. I, I wouldn't think so. I'm pretty loud. 
But when I, okay, so when I start concentrating, like if I'm doing something, I might get quieter then. So that's, that's probably maybe it. Okay, here's what I did, you guys. Here's my guy, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's neat, but he's kind of getting lost in the whole scheme of things. Yeah, so we're going to do a little emboss resist. I've got Knight of Navy ink and a sponge, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to sponge some color onto my dude sitting in his little lawn chair. And then I'm going to bring in a tissue and wipe off that embossing powder. There we go. And that brightens the whole thing up, don't you think? I don't like the edges around here, so hang on, that kind of smeared on me. There we go. And then you can just polish it off. What do you guys think? That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Hang on a second. There we go. All right, now, then what I did is I took this and mounted it on a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock that's just an eighth of an inch bigger than this framelit. So <clears throat> it's three and seven eighths by five and a quarter. Let's see if I can get this on here straight. Sometimes that's the biggest struggle, right? And scrolling. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Denise. Denise says pretty. Lana says neat. Lois says I like that, right? It's a cool idea. <clears throat> okay. Next, we are going to take the framelits, and I need happy, there's happy, father's day, right here. Okay, put these away so I don't lose any of them. That would make me very sad. <clears throat> and I'm going to cut these out in the big shot. And of course, I've already done that through the magic of TV. So now we need to get them onto our card. And what I decided to do here is just to add, oh, now I have glue on my fingers. Hang on, because that's not going to be good. Did I throw away that wipe? Nope, it's right here. Okay, glue. Here we go. I'm just going to put some little dots of glue on a few of the letters here. Happy. And then fathers. Now, of course, you could use any of the words or any greeting you wanted on here. This would make a fabulous retirement card. It would make a really good birthday card. Um, a, I don't know, maybe a get well, you know, relax and heal or whatever after surgery. Happy Father's Day is what I was going to come up with here. And then... I've got a whisper white thick card base, um, five, eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. And here's where I'm going to come in with the being a good dad starts with being a good man. And I got that pretty darn crooked, so we're going to try it again. <laughs> yeah, let's see if I can get it on here straight this time. Oh, that looks so much better. And then also inside this stamp set is this little sketch art heart that I really like. Okay, so what about that? Like, what is she going to do? We're going to cover that up with the front of our card that we just made. So that's why I always recommend that you don't glue anything together until you have all your stamping done. Because if you mess it up like I did, 
Now we're just going to put this right over the front. You're never going to know that was there. But if I had glued it all together, well, then we'd have to figure out something else to change or to fix my crooked greeting, right? Oh, Cindy says, now I'm really loud. Well, I'm not doing anything different. <laughs> I'm just doing me tonight. Now, I've got some white baker's twine, and I decided that I wanted to dress this up just a little bit. So I'm going to take my baker's twine and wrap it around the edge here three times. And Oops, keep this in the frame so you guys can see what I'm doing. You'd think I was here stamping by myself, right? <laughs> and I'm going to tie this in a knot. I like to do that with baker's twine or linen thread because you can. It doesn't really add a, any bulk like ribbon would if you're trying to, you know, tie a knot in ribbon. And then I've got the sail away trinkets. And I just thought, how cool would it be, since we've, we've got a sailing theme going on here, if I added one of these anchors. And... I'm just gonna kind of tie this in a bow. And I know this is a man card and I'm kind of weird about bows on man cards, but it worked. <laughs> so, there's our little anchor. And hang on, I've got it kind of goofy here. Look at that. This is an emboss resist technique. That's really cool to do right on top of designer series paper. Yeah, there we go. So, Look at this, we've got this, woo! That's pretty, right? And then we have all three of, whoops, let me grab this one. This one, this one, and this one. And then here's my card challenge. If you came on late, you guys, I have a card challenge and I need to put a a deadline on it too so I'd say by next Sunday at noon let me write that down or I'll forget Sunday at noon card challenge Sunday submit your pictures of your cards that you make and that is June 16 6 16 you submit cards and you can um they're going to need to go to, this is where you put them, go to a stamp above dash your creative coach. That's where you're watching this video at right now. And I will start, you'll see a picture of this card that I'm going to post when the video is done here. I'll go in and post a picture of this card and a picture of these cards. You're going to go to the comments under that post. You can do it with your phone, your iPad, your laptop, whatever device you're on. You go to a stamp above dash your creative coach, scroll down until you see a picture of this. In the comments, when you like are gonna type a comment, when you click in there, a little camera comes up. You can then take a picture of your card and share it, or you can take a picture with your camera and bring it up into the comments. That's where all of these are gonna need to go so that I can keep track of them. If you email me, if you private message them, if you put them on my VIP group, none of that is going to count towards the drawing because it's too many places for me to look for things. On my Facebook page where you're watching my video right now, under the picture of this card layout, cut your cardstock, cut your designer series paper up. This layer right here should be designer series paper and the rest of it is a very loose challenge. <laughs> All right, now... Did anybody have any questions that I missed? Because again, my laptop was not scrolling. Don't forget to share my video. I really appreciate that. Sharing it really helps me out. Orders, you can go right to my blog, www.astampabove.com. Look in the right-hand column. You're going to find an online ordering button and you'll also find the host code there all the time, right in that right-hand column. Use that when placing your order if it's under $150. If you have a bigger wish list than $100, join my team of discount shoppers. You will get a 20% discount on all your future orders. 
you get to choose $125 worth of product for only $99, no shipping, taxes added on. But you save $12.50 in shipping just on a $125 order. So it's a it's the best deal we have in the catalog. Pat, Patricia is asking if you can use um, retired stamps. Somebody else asked if it's okay to use retired designer series paper. My only qualification is that it loosely resembles this layout and that this layer is designer series paper wherever. I prefer it to be Stampin' Up, of course. But it can be retired, it can be new, it can be a special limited edition. Designer series paper right here. I want you to go grab that pack of paper you have that you have not opened yet because you're sure you're gonna find some fantastic project to make with it that's never gonna happen. I know, I live that. <laughs> I want you to open it up and make some cards like this. Just get get a bunch of cards made so that you're ready. You can make a whole set of these and give them as a gift. Put them in a little one of our acetate clear card boxes. That would make a fantastic gift. This is a great thing, um, a gift to give to somebody who's maybe been in the hospital and they're coming home now. They have a bunch of thank you cards that they need to send out, right? Give them that gift. That would be a wonderful idea. Um, Jenny says, can we use it on the bottom side? Jenny, the only thing I'm going to say is designer series paper right here. That's it. You do whatever you want. <laughs> that makes it easy. Okay. Um, Lana says, will you be getting some of the Stampin' Up cutting blades back in? Yes. We're supposed to be getting shipments each month until the last month, I think, is September. So watch for that. Um... Does it have to be that punch? No, Kathy, but it has to be designer series paper. You guys are making more out of this than you need to. Designer series paper right here. That's it. That's my only rule, and then it loosely resembles this layout. Okay. Great question, though, Kathy. Trying to inspire my old group. They got to see this. Oh, well, that's great, Sharon. Woohoo. Um, oh, morning, morning, morning. <laughs> Okay, you guys, don't forget, join my challenge, make a card using this layout. I hope you guys have enjoyed the cards that we um, created here tonight together. I always enjoy my time that I spend with you for sure. I want everybody to have a fantastic week. Watch for my tip video on Wednesday. Um, I have another uh, blog hop on Thursday and another video coming out on Friday. And hop on over to my blog where you can find an online ordering button to place orders. I always appreciate your orders. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would be happy to earn your business and I can pop you one of these catalogs in the mail. You will love it. It is filled with so many beautiful things. Um, but you have to private message me your address. And make sure you don't forget the address part because I have lots of people who say, I would love a catalog. Well, I can't send you one without an address, so put that right in there with your request. I always get a kick out of that. It makes me giggle. You make me giggle when you do that. Okay, you guys, I am going to um, sign off. If I miss you, yeah, now go eat. Yeah, I already ate my meal today, Bev, so don't worry. It was yesterday that I didn't eat except chips. <laughs> um let me know if you have any questions that I missed. I really apologize for that. But, you know, Facebook Live is kind of a fickle thing. And when it doesn't scroll on my computer, it's not helpful. Have yourselves a wonderful week. I will be back again on June 16th at 7 p.m. Central Time. I'm going to try to get back into the habit of doing a Facebook Live on my VIP page. That's an exclusive page for anybody who orders from me. And I was doing Facebook Lives in there once a week, but I kind of had to take a little break because the new catalog and all the responsibilities that come with that um, had me deadlined right out. Like I was booked up and I kind of didn't have time to do it. So I'm going to start doing that again. So those of you that have placed orders and if you're on my team, you also have access to that special group. Um, for those of you that uh, are missing that it's gonna be back so don't worry I was a little overwhelmed there for a bit and had 
lots of things going on. Those things are settling down maybe a little bit. <laughs> maybe not, but I miss my Facebook Lives in the VIP group too. I know somebody's going to ask me, how can I get in your VIP group? All you have to do is go to my online store and place an order and I will add you to the VIP group. That is an exclusive group where I do special things for the people who order from me um, as a way to thank them for their continued support through those orders because this is my full-time job <laughs> and I just paid my bills this week. So, whew. All right, you guys. Have yourselves a great week. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.